this? Not really, right? I think we can like take them. So on the bottom side, you see all the heroes that are currently either dark heroes, but I can't like say anything uh, uh, about them. Actually, I can like put this guy in. So this units below, they are currently not really used in the current meta. Um, so I can't tell if they're good, if they're not that good. If someone in the Twitch chat or in YouTube chat later on says, oh, wait a second, but like this and this people on this and this server using like this guy, for instance, then just tell me, we're going to make new TLS anyway with the new update. So these are currently the units that I see in the meta and that I see also strong in the meta where I can like tell who is on top, who is not on top. So first things first, I think we can like focus a little bit on carries. Like what carry are people using and how strong are they? I think we all can agree that Night Leader currently is also like a super top. I wouldn't say he is like the best, but he is definitely at the top. Why is this? So, in the current meta, you have to think about this. The best, also tank, like we're not only, only talking about Karis, but the best way to deal, all, yeah, let's say it this way. The best way to deal with the incoming damage is reducing it to zero. So if you can reduce it to zero, you kind of like have a either good support tank or a good carry. So who can reduce damage to zero? Knight leader. Also knight leader can either have like with defense or with his, I think his exclusive also, gives him CC immunity while he is um, in his bubble. So here's invincibility bubble, so damage to zero and CC immune. What else can you ask for? Boom, he's there. So, um, we also have to think about the aspect of wall and stages, you know? Wall and stages, what is the difference? Stages overall have like more HP but less damage and wall has like way more damage and less HP. So if you want also to push walls, Night Leader is also the way to go. So, let's put in the other hero that I see being on top as well. This is actually Talos. Why Talos? He is really good on wall. Why on wall? He has really high damage outburst, which grants him a few kills. And on wall, like I said before, damage is high, HP is low in comparison to stages. Uh, so everything that just boom chakalaka, you know, is good. So Talos is really good. Really high damage, high survivability, especially with a tenacious uh, skill. Um, yeah, he can definitely outlast. Also with the right artifact, um, he can do like even more, you know, like a I actually don't know like what is the best for him. Maybe Agile Force even. Maybe Military Force. All seems good, to be honest. All seems good. Maybe even Balance Force, to be honest. Yeah. So, so far I think everyone agrees. Okay, who else do I see actually at the top? Like we also have, we have to think about Wall and stages, you know, and there I would say we can probably put the black rope as well on top. Unfortunately, there's only one player that using it. I tried to get him on my wall team for a week, didn't got it, so I didn't like even could like see how good he is, what is he lacking, positioning, etc. wise. Um, so why do I put him in here? First of all, he has one of the best sustainability in the entire game, like, and also scaling, like, he scales super good, especially into the later game, so, and currently as well, 
He's maybe not the best for the wall, but he is definitely really, really good on stages. Like, you have to think about this. You're attacking an enemy, you definitely, definitely taking 1.5% HP of them away while you heal yourself. Then you have, like, a you AoE. If you somehow can kill another unit, you're actually summoning another mummy, etc. So you outscale. You outheal the enemy. It's also really good uh, against tanks. Like, if you encounter a tank on stages, you're just diminishing their HP, and in the end it doesn't matter if they, like, still tank you or not, you know? Unfortunately, we still don't see the debuff counter. I really would like to see the debuff counter. But as far as I know, the, um, the um, Wolf Dot, for instance, stacking on the Knight Leader's Invincibility Shield, which is why I think that uh, the HP reduction also work on the Knight Leader Shield. But I can't confirm it because I don't see it. So... Let's continue with the carries though, and then we're gonna like going to put the supporters as well. Because only if it's like a support, it doesn't mean that it does not belong in here, you know. So um another carry. The Devil Prince. So Devil Prince I definitely don't see as good as the Knight Leader or um I or almost said Chaos. Uh Atalos and Black Rope. But he still is like really decent. Why is he decent? Because of his um, exclusive. Like his exclusive is making him invincible for a period of time. <laughs> um, and I think Sissimian as well. I'm not quite sure. You come to see and see F tier almost I'm like what? Just wait. Um, yeah. So that's why he has a look, uh, he has good survivability for wall, and he's kind of also okay against tanks. So I'm not sure if I like going to put him in here or in here, right? Um, but he's definitely below that, like this three, like this three currently, I would say are the top of the notch. You know, like wow. So. Uh, Hell Mage. The thing is, Hell Mage kind of sucks in Wall. He just dies way too fast. And even though I just said in Wall you want like really good damage output, he kind of lacks of it as well, like in comparison to the other heroes, which is super weird because um, his damage output is actually really good. The only problem is he scales horribly. And I think now. Like, the hero's starting to outscaling him. So, he's still... No, he's also not that good on stages as well. Like, he's good in the beginning. But the higher level you get, the less good he becomes. Like, he still has, like, good damage. But, yeah. Also, let me just put this guy in. There we go. Okay, let's continue. Another good source, um, like another good carry, I would say is Gargoyle. Gargoyle is really good in war, really good in war. Why? You can actually dish out a ton of damage. It's not like the stages where you like rely on more sustain, you know. He's really good on wall because a lot of damage. If he gets to see, well, it's over. But then, with the new um, wave, you can like deal even more damage. You know what I mean? Just revive him. Um, yes, I can. So let's continue. I mean, I don't know. Do I have to say something more? Less? I don't see him currently. Like he's definitely not here. But he's also not there. Overall on stages, he is susceptible to CC. So you kind of need Witte or someone to prevent him to getting CC on stages. Um, Devil Prince attack. Yeah, it's like not that much. 
Like, yes, you're doing some damage, but you're more of a tank. You're still doing damage, but you're more of a tank. You so you can survive, which is good on wall, but on campaign it doesn't help you that much. That's why we see a lot of like devil princes and like switching from devil princess to someone else at a later stage. Okay. So let's continue um, again uh, or further. Uh, the Undead Warrior. Undead Warrior, my boy. So here, uh, first things first, I have to say, I tell you guys, I probably am biased towards Undead Warrior. So if I position him uh, somewhere, you have to think about, okay, I'm using actually Undead Warrior since the beginning of the game. So if I put him somewhere, you know, but I probably... I mean, he's definitely not here, guys. <laughs> but he is actually better than Gargoyle because he has the C immunity on his own. Otherwise, he is almost like Gargoyle. Gargoyle has definitely more damage. But Underboar is like way tankier. Um, I mean, I ran a wall stage and. Under the Warrior was 100 level below the Night Leader, and at some times Under the Warrior even outlast, like survived the Night Leader, which is insane, right? Like you have to think about it. Night Under the Warrior does not have so much HP, so every time he actually crits or life steals, he most of the time like almost life steals himself to full. Also, his exclusive got a little bit reworked, um, which now his shield actually really exceeds his max HP up to in total 200% HP. So this makes him like a little bit more tankier. So he has like, you can you can think about this. He has now double the HP that he is showing after he attacks one time. Oh, like two times. Yeah. So which makes him like actually kind of like tanky. Although his defense stats is still not good, but his rage giving him not only 3.5 seconds CC immunity, but 6 seconds CC immunity. Also, he can offset fatal attacks on his own, and with Tenacious it's even like um, second base. So... Let's see... Okay. <sighs> so yeah, I would actually... So he is definitely better than Gargoyle, right? But he is not better than one of these three. Although I have to admit, I think if someone at the higher stages could try out Undead Warrior in Wall, would be super, super cool. So if someone who is like um, in the top currently would just try out Undead Warrior in the Wall, I would like to see it, to be honest. Like how good he is. Because he already proven in Wall that he's tanky. But does he have like enough damage? Yeah. And it was S with Gago, to be honest. The thing is, Gago is a C uh, uh, um, susceptible. And that warrior has almost double the HP and is CC immune and has also um, fatal attack. Like, he's, he survives. Way longer than Gago. Even though Gago on paper has more DPS, in total, Another War is going to get more damage out than Gago. Yeah. So let's continue. Yeah, Gago has glass can. Exactly. If you can work around him, then of course Gago is dealing more damage than Another Warrior. But if you can't, you know, 
And uh, Devil Prince, uh, in comparison to this bow, he lacks uh, damage, but he still is like tanky. This is why he's he's not below Gargoyle, but he's also not above Gargoyle. Okay, now let's go to the next carry. So, like I said to you before, guys, everything that is... Every time that you can, like, put damage or convert damage into zero, like dodging or um, invincibility, you just got to be up in this up in the rank, right? Especially for wall, and it's still good for stages. So who is definitely going up? Is Melusina. Like Melusina overall against Undead Warrior probably would lose. You know, one v one. But overall. Why is she also SS, even though she is, in my opinion, a little bit weaker than Undead Warrior? Is because she can actually convert the damage to zero. And I'm actually like thinking about, you know, something like this even. Like, because she can convert this, she's currently in the meta actually better than Undead Warrior. Especially with her... Yeah, but it's only 95 when she uses her um, her skill. You have to think about this. Uh, at first, you know why dodge. Now you dodge is super good. Yes. In the current meta, yes, it is. Um, but still, I think yeah, her fourth talents could be better. Like more damage. She already has a lot of dodge. So, um, yeah, since since currently everything that you can convert uh, damage to zero in the current meta is really good, dodge is good, and um, knight and uh, the shield is good. And this is why she's like definitely really good in here. The cap is 90. Yeah, they definitely need to be reduced to 80 at least. 90 is like super high. Maybe even to 70 to balance things out. Um, but yeah, overall, pretty good. Pretty good in wall, by the way. Why in wall? Well, high damage, low HP, they attack you, you dodge, you attack, kill. So this is why she actually is stronger than Gargoyle. And also with her exclusive, I think if she gets CC'd, she still can counter attacks. And her damage is like also not like bad. And I think she still can dodge if she's CC'd. So yeah, that's making her making her like super super tanky. So overall, either as a carry, she's good. You know what? Since she's good as a carry, yeah. Let's actually do like this. Because she's not only good as a carry, she's actually good as a carry and also as a, a support tank. Like, if you have a support tank, the melee is actually really good. Because, yeah, she like fits in two roles, carry and support tank, right? Although, another warrior survives a really, really long, right? With this offset attack skill, mmm... Okay, I'm just doing like this, but this might be because I'm biased towards Undead Warrior. Maybe Melu is like better, because she's like more versatile. Yeah. It buys on RG? What is RG again? Uh... Yeah, Mel also, Mel also prioritizes backlines, yeah. But on wall, on stages... Not sure if it matters. Actually... Yeah, let's, let's just keep it this way. 
Okay, this is by the way a cool thing. Oh yeah, Royal God. Let's put him in. Let's put the boy in. Mm, okay, let's continue. Do we have any more carries? Yes, we have. So we have Ymir. Ymir is definitely going to go to S tier. Why? Well, even though he is like decent on wall, he is actually really good on stages. Unfortunately, uh, he gets beat down by Rhoda. Like, he has a really hard counter, Rhoda. Why? Well, Ymir can practically perma stun enemies. And not only practically, but he actually can. Uh, we had a mm, Ymir player that actually confirmed it. And on paper, it also sounds reasonable. So, yeah. So, Ymir in 1v1 can actually perma stun you. So, if you can't get your rage off, and in my opinion, they should change it that, that you can't use your rage while you're in CC. If they change it, then, well, we got a counter for Night Leader. But so far, not really, because, well, Night Leader is like CC, 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 but then he like proxies. Anti CC bubble shield and then he like kills Ymir. But overall, Ymir is really good on stages as well. And on walls, he's like. Without Tenacious, he like dies too fast. But Tenacious is actually pretty good. Like I said before, if you CC him, you can deal a lot of damage. He has, actually has a lot of damage, a lot of attack speed. Um, with the right gear, the right necklace, etc. He's actually really decent. Really, really decent. Um, let's put the wolf. Hmm. Yeah, the wolf is not as good as Ymir. Like, why is the wolf here, by the way? Maybe uh, some of you players like... What? Wolf? I never saw this. So there was actually one player that used the wolf and I asked him a few questions that I like thought about why the wolf could be good and yes, he actually confirmed this. Wolf is currently the number one tank killer. So he is uber good in stages. But because his HP pool is so low, he is... Mm, yeah, he is weak on walls. So, Wolf is currently uber good in stages. Especially if you like, um, maybe run a second Wolf as a Bleed stacker, because Bleed also stacks. But overall, if you're struggling against... Rhoda, Giant, Crap, in stage whatsoever, use the Wolf, zero problems. Yeah. So this is why Wolf is like really, really good. But because he's like not that versatile, like he is, he is super squishy. Like, his defense stats is not good, his HP stats is not good. Um, even with his exclusive, that giving him shield is not enough because it's like, don't exceed. He really needs, he needs a exceed buff like the Undead Warrior, where his bleed, his bleed shield exceeds his max HP. Um, but yeah, the cool part about uh, Wolf is actually that he uh, stacks also against Knight Leader's Invincibility Shield. So the Bleeding stacks, and then with the, when the Knight Leader Invincibility Shield drops, he's taking a ton of bleed damage. Wolf kind of kills himself on Wood Elf Shield. Almost everyone kills himself on Wood Elf Shield. Maybe only Knight Leader not. Yeah. Other than this, like on walls, Wolf is like not, not good enough. But stages, Wolf is like really, really good. Really good. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Same I would say with this guy. So someone was using him. 
not sure who it was again. And he carried me through all like super hard, super hard. But then again, he was also like super high level. Um, this is a really decent tank. This is a really decent tank. He survives a lot. He depositions the enemy if you want. And sometimes you want it. Sometimes you don't. I mean, with helmets you don't. But with, uh, I don't know, under water you want. So good depositioner, good tank, overall good stats, uh, scale pretty good, and um, even for a tank, kind of like decent damage, overall kind of good. Okay. Lich, 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 Lich. We also have to think about like um, not only carries, but this TLS is currently the wall and stages also with supporters. Yeah, let's actually take glitch a little bit later. I mean, who definitely goes up here or even up here is actually the bat, right? Yeah, I would like to say bad is actually insane. Uh, yeah, bad SSS. Uh, like, not as carry, but as a supporter, you have everything. You're getting lifesteal on your carry. You're getting um, a ton of CC, silence, everything. Uh, if you survive a little bit longer, uh, AOE CC. Yeah, everything that you want. Um, a lot of RNG based, but just purely insane insanity. Close to Perma CC sometimes, yeah. Oh yeah, and also healing enemies, yeah, 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 completely forgot. So yeah, okay, bad SSS, I, I think uh, no one complains this, right? Like, bad is just... Insane. Um, Alchemist, I actually would say currently SS, especially since uh, you can use her and her exclusive and rage in combination with Night Leader. You know, in combination with your supporters as well. Like, she works as a supporter for the supporters or for some carries. Like, for instance, I currently running under the warrior. For me, it's like not that super important. Sometimes this one second counts though. But um, her exclusive giving rage to your units is actually, actually super good on your supporters as well. So, and sometimes taking away like rage from the enemy is also like important. So this is why I would definitely say Alchemist SS in this um, current meta because she's like usable and <clears throat> almost everyone like use her. I, I mean, bet. Really, I don't know if there's like anyone who does not use bat. I probably there are a few unit, a few people that don't use alchemist. But yeah. So let's continue. Okay, the eye. Um, the thing is with the exclusive, the eye um gives you petrif. Fiction 30% damage, so it actually scales your carry again. Um, I'm not kind of sure if it's that amazingly good. I think the eye is a little bit overrated. I don't want to say that the eye is bad, but I think the eye is like overrated. Like a lot of people using the eye, even they if they don't need to use the eye. Um, but it's definitely a unique bonus, especially with Alchemist. Like, if the eye dies and the Alchemist survives, it gives you a little bit more time for the Alchemist to regenerate a lot of rage on your other units. Um, yeah, the stun is really good, but overall, the eye is a little bit overrated. 
But in a good team composition, the eye is actually like really good. Yeah. I mean, everything that pushes your current one-man carry is actually really good. And the eye with the exclusive 30% damage on, um, on uh, petrification is only so a thing is on that. Not anymore. It was earlier, but now it's like both. If he can survive, especially with the alchemist, they're giving you rage. And if you can then petrify something, he's getting more damage in, and then your carry is good. And then current meta, it's actually super good. Also, I'm not sure he, uh, his exclusives have petrified enemies. Does it mean also bad petrified enemies? Because I think yes. I don't think it's only to the petrification of the eye, which means every kind of petrification is dealing more damage. Yeah, in the current meta, everything that buffs your um, carry is actually kind of like really good. Okay, let's go with the Wood Elf. Okay, I'll be honest guys. It's probably debatable for you. But... Petrified counts bad and Lich, but does it count stun? Petrified is only petrified, like if they're in stone. Okay, so here there are probably maybe a few people that would disagree. But I see a Wood Elf definitely SSS. Definitely. Um, first of all, you have Entangle also on hits, higher chance than the eye, and reducing the defense by 50%, not 30, 50%. Um, then her AoE Entangle, etc., you know, almost like Petrify, but for longer duration. And also her shield, that affects like everyone, like... Definitely everyone and it doesn't matter when you know with the eye you have like this timing petrified But sometimes this timing can be like good can be bad but the Shield that giving you 100% of your HP as a shield is like insane, especially for high HP units That's why it's like It's helping you especially for like something like black rope like black rope and wooden elf um, yeah, together, really strong, but also, like, Talos benefits a lot from her. Oh, yeah, and also her exclusive, they're giving you attack and attack speed. Yeah, like, attack speed on supporters means even more rage, and attack overall, if she survives a little bit, boom. Like... Overall, what else? I see her SSS. Like, I don't see a reason why you don't want to use her. I don't just see the reason. What else? Uh, root on hit, really good. Yeah. Oh, also, yeah, completely forgot. Root is actually, as far as I know, currently one of the only... Uh, like, I'm not sure how Root works, but as f like I know that Stun, Petrified, etc, etc is not stackable. The same goes with Freeze. Freeze is not stackable. Um, it just looks like it. Like, if you freeze for 4 seconds, only the last 0 0.5 seconds or 0 0.3 seconds, you can kind of, like, uh, refreeze him, something like this. Also, Lich Attack is, like, in line, but also AoE in line. Which means sometimes you un the enemy got unfreezed and then he like, since the attack is passing, he got like freeze again. This is why sometimes it looks like freeze is permanent, but you can't freeze when he's freezed. But Root, somehow, I don't know, it feels like, I'm not sure, 
um, that it you can root a root person so you can perma rooting yeah so overall wood elf really good I would actually even like to see a wood elf as a carry although she has a supporter role so probably not that great um, okay let's go with the elf soul Okay, let's see how many people will agree on this. Like, the thing about Elf Soul is, yes, she's great, but there are a lot of heroes where she does not work well. Like, there are a few people that where she does not really work well, especially if you think about Alchemist and the Eye. Like, Alchemist, for instance. Alchemist works... I think in almost every team uh, composition, right? But Elf Sul as a supporter, um, for instance, she does not work with Giant. She does not work good with, um, let's see, with Undead Warrior. <laughs> Completely not. Uh, does she work good with Night Leader? Uh, um, hmm. I'm not sure. You need to ask some night leader players. But I. Well, could be, right? Does it work well with Talos? Does it? It definitely does not work good with Black Rope. Like, Elf Soul, Black Rope, forget, forget her. You don't need Elf Soul if you have Black Rope. Like, come on. You're proccing you're your uh, anti kill lifesteal. Uh, and then you're proccing uh, the shield. What? Completely garbage. So yeah, I mean, yes, with Talos she works great, right? Who though? On HGP sounds right. No more than SS for sure. Yeah. Like, she's not as versatile as Alchemist, for instance. Like, Alchemist, with the current... Um, in the current meta, is, like, way more versatile. And I don't see Elf Soul be in the same stage with Alchemist, since Alchemist also buffs all your other supporters, while Elf Soul, well, your supporter just dies most of the time. So... I personally would even like do something like this, but since I know that she still works good against like others or with other heroes, she's good. But for Undead Warrior, she's like completely garbage. And for like Black Rope. She's good with Wolf though. Really, really good. Really, really good. Like she and Wolf? Yes, definitely. Wait, do I get Alchemist Exclusive first or what of Magic I bet? Um Elk, I would say. Alchemist. Yeah, Alchemist is like without Alchemist Exclusive, she's like not she's actually Is she even useful without her exclusive? Mm -mm. Like everyone else without exclusive is still um usable, but Alchemist without exclusive, not really, right? No, she's garbage without exclusive. Uh, let's go with her. With her is uh, really, really um, situational. First of all, you need to get with us. You need to get with us rage off, and this already is tr is hard as a support with her. This is hard. But some units are actually reliant on Bitter. If you get his exclusive all then, then it's like super good. But you need to get his ex um, his rage off, I mean. You need to uh, get his rage off. Like, he and Gago is like really good. But then again, like I said again, you, you need something to protect him. So you need Elf, Soul, Wood Elf. If you can, then he is like really good. Maybe even, you know what, maybe even like S. But it's hard. It's hard. 
Where the cyber character is, is less tanky backwards since he is. Yeah, the thing is with um, Witter is you want his anti CC. That's the only reason why you want Witter, right? Everything else is like, why else would you want Witter? Um, I mean, he can link himself with the range unit, but then again, you will need like a strong Witter. Hmm. Like, he is only good with his uh, Rage, but getting his Rage off is kind of hard, so I would say A. Okay, uh, Lich we already saw um, in the wall, if you have a strong frontliner, Lich is actually insanely good, insanely good. Like, in wall, Lich is, like, if you have a Knight Leader and a Lich, and maybe even another frontliner, Bonkers. Eulich is definitely going to freeze a unit until the end, even with one freeze. Like, we already had Mika, where his freeze lasted, I think, 8 seconds. Like, he froze, then he died, and the unit was, I think, yeah, he was, like, frozen for 8 seconds, something like this. He only didn't die because he had, like, shields, infinite, etc. from other ones. Um... So definitely, definitely for wall, extremely good. For stages, I'm not sure, but as a second carry, he would even go up. But for wall, yeah, he's really good. Yeah, mentality and exclusive. It's like one time freeze, and then the enemy is prop. Yeah, practically like frozen until the end of, like yeah, until he dies. And he can CC freeze, uh, AOE freeze. But other than the wall... Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I see him as S, but potential to get SS, especially later on. Like, in wall, he's definitely here. Like, somewhere between here. Like, you want a Lich in your in your wall, you want a Lich in your team. If you want to progress, you want some frontliners, and you want a Lich in your team. Trust me, guys. If you stuck at 3,000 somewhere, like, I have no idea, because I haven't stuck at 3,000. But I firmly believe, if you get a Lich in your team, you're definitely going to climb way faster. Like, you're taking, you're taking away, like, CC is not only taking away, um, like, CCing the enemy so that uh, you can kill him, but also he can't deal damage to you, and if you CC right, boom. And since you have AoE CC with your, like, line, or line CC, I don't know how to say this, um, the chances are really high that you're going to freeze someone. Okay, Newfet, unfortunately, got, like, a little bit... Well, actually, he got buffed, but kind of also nerfed on the same time. He got reworked, um, which means him actually a little bit less good at a supporter, but kind of also good in wall. You know, it's kind of weird. Like everything that's um, like I said, I said everything that can you get to zero damage. Well, damage reduction is good, and uh, well, if the enemy is attacking your puppet, and you're going to take the damage first, if the puppet like don't die, like if you have like a good level of new pet, then your puppet can actually survive for a long time. So he's actually really, really tanky for wall. Um, unfortunately, he can't disarm permanently anymore. Uh, I'm really sad about this, even though I didn't use new pet, I don't like this, but it also kind of make him more reliable later when enemies also, I don't know if enemies also have like this talent, but if anyone has like this defend talent, then definitely damage reduction as a debuff is better than, well, not disarm, you know, yeah. Uh, put DL with the others, F to rate him later. 
that's four anti deaths is really, really good. Dark Lord. Uh, this limit many 50 damage sec with ice many 25. Uh, why should it not? I is aura, new fit is attack, debuff. I don't see why it should not stack. Okay, then we go giant. Is anyone using him as a carry anyway? Or can we just take him out away? Chapma! Definitely really good as a um, in wall as a second CC because of like your wall, maybe even SSS. Um, because even he alone is actually really good with another carry. Oh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Hmm. not sure. Not sure about him. Yeah, yeah, free chapmas, free everything. Like free yasas would even be. No, would it be? Yeah, I can't decide, guys. Uh, imagine being the hero and not getting an SS rank at the spot. We are only discussing right now who is good on wall and stages in the current meta. And not really discussing like Dark Hero as a carry. Dark Hero as a carry will probably, I don't know. He would probably be SSS somewhere. Said Leto no SSS. Yeah, Leto for instance is like really good. Like he scales really good, right? Okay, let's actually... I'm going to put this 4 and then we're going to discuss why. Okay. Cassia wall SSS? Really? Really? Any Cassio player in here? Any high high Cassio player in here? Is Cassio really that great on wall? I mean Cassio is definitely better on wall than on stages. A uh, lot of damage output, outbursts, especially for not climbing, but especially for um, pushing. But for climbing, I mean, overall, Casio, he like dies, dies fast, right? Y yes, when the wall was released. Yeah, especially this is what I uh, what I mean. You're getting one shot later. Of course, in the beginning, he's like really everyone that has AOE in the beginning is like insane. But not only AOE. Like if you have black rope. Um, then you can probably also without even a we just burst through the wall super easy. Cassio just dies super fast as a frontliner, and he also has like a little bit of non-constant damage. I mean, Dark Lord is good, right? The offsetting four attacks, unfortunately. Um, attack speed is kind of fast on the enemy, which means even your fatal damage attacks doesn't bring you that much on wall. But it's kind of like the cool, good part about Dark Lord is he scales good, right? Early on he's like garbage, but later on he's like really strong, like really strong. Yeah. Yeah, Talos early on is good, but definitely everything that has lifesteal is like way better. Like Black Rope, Undead Warrior, um, Devil Prince. 
I show you what the bat everything gets in the first round. But only as long as like the bat is like alive. Okay, Magician is definitely better than um, Hellmage in walls, but is not as good in stages. But in walls, um, yeah, because you're like immediately taking like damage out, especially when you like not climbing but pushing. Keep pushing. Yeah, he's never been used on walls. We need someone to use him on wall. Um, the problem is, like, I saw a lot of times in wall. Um, like, in wall you have a lot of damage and less HP. Which means, like, survivability, sustainability is kind of hard. And I think this is where Royal Guards, like, um, has a hard time. I think he's really good in stages. But I think in walls he actually struggles because of the melee damage output will outscale his damage. Like they probably, like even if you carry him, I don't think that rage is the only damage source of the enemies in walls. Like walls is like super high damage. So this is why it's hard to put him somewhere here. I actually didn't even want to like rate him because I have don't know how to rate him and to be honest, yeah, let's just put him out. I have no idea, guys. So this is why I don't see a point to rate him. So this concludes the current Yeah, this concludes the current meta on walls and stages. I would say yeah, on version 1.2 uh, 1.02 no mummy rate again um, I have no information of, on mummy how good is she mummy probably again like like a dark lord I would probably as purpose a lot of stupid stuff and realize it's stupid afterwards really. um, so, this concludes the tier list of the current meta of version 1.02. Uh, here you see who I didn't include it. If you like think, oh, but why didn't you include like something like this, then um, tell me what I should have included. And I definitely can like probably change this. With the save download, something like this. Um, yeah, so let me... Let me like super fast also make the tier list. This is 1.20 pow. This is the meta tier list. Um, a small recap because I'm going to upload both videos, the long version and the short version. So let me actually do the short version now. So hello guys, uh, welcome to the short version or the summarize of the tier list of the meta tier list is 1.02 version of the game. Um, this concludes only heroes that are currently used in meta, um, depending on wall and on stages. Uh, so as you can see, like these are the heroes that I didn't conclude because I don't see them in wall, and uh, like also don't really see them in stages. If you have like any other suggestions, or if you'd like say, oh, but like ty giant is used, etc., uh, which I don't like actually see, or mummy or something like this, um, then just tell me, and we're going to like reevaluate this. So first of all, Helmage YSCB, well in walls he kind of sucks because he um, like out like he getting outscaled especially in the later stages like this tier list is then the current meta. So at about like my level and plus. Then we have Wolf super good against tanks. Uh, this one is a really good tank. Uh, with a, if he proxies rage really good for instance for Gaggle or like anyone else who getting like CC good on stage not as good and uh, wall magician really good on wall better than the mage but on stages kind of like sucks um, then we have like gaggle super good damage output but cc susceptible uh, devil prince really good tank but lacking a little bit of damage uh, ymir uh, almost permanently cc really good on stages not that great and walls um, dies too fast and also in stages rhoda just kills you so really hard counter um, otherwise really good uh, also, 
situational to some heroes, like she doesn't work well with a few heroes, for instance, she and Black Rope doesn't well um, work together, she and Underwater completely, you can ignore her. Uh, Lish, really, really good in wall, uh, in wall, but not that, like, an okay-ish in stages, but in wall, must have. Uh, new Fed, um, because of his, like, rework, he is better in stages but less better on walls something like this and overall like good but not like insane um, I forgot him Diablo I don't know how to call him um, his skill is really good overall not bad his uh, offset attacks is really good on stages on wall could work could sometimes not work it dependable Casio as well like super high damage outburst but also dies super fast um, then on SS we have Undead Warrior, um, on wall super survivable, like insane tank, um, yeah. Then Melo, uh, every everything that you can like get from zero, uh, um, every time you can make a damage output to zero, be it like dodge or invincibility shield, you're getting up, so this is why Melo, 95% dodge uh, with her skill, otherwise 90%. And yes, this guy is Dark Lord. Um, top of the notch as well. Alchemist, super versatile with her exclusive. Without her, her exclusive, she's like garbage. With her exclusive, super versatile. She's helping not only your carry getting rage off faster, but also your supporters getting rage faster, which is super important. Uh, like almost every unit, uh, almost every stage is using her on walls, not really. So I. Yeah, petrific petrification plus 30% damage on petrify units with the exclusive. A bonus to your hard carry and the current one man carry. Super good. Uh, Chapma, really good uh, CC um, on walls and I guess also on stages, but I think on walls even better. Then let's go here from the right to the left. Uh, Wood Elf, just insane. Um, CC on hit with uh, defense reduction, AOE CC, defense reduction, especially with Alchemist, where you get rage faster, and also the shield. The shield that gives you 100% uh, shield and also like deflecting, like deflecting shield, the enemy is attacking himself and like killing himself. Super insane. Um, Bet overall, like the best hero ever currently like as a supporter um, you have AOE CC most of the time you can sometimes silence the enemies stunning him freezing them petrifying them whatever um, also he giving everyone 10% um, HP and um, life steal which is insane Especially if for someone that does not have lifesteal, or so for someone who does have lifesteal, but even higher. And also, like his link, where both enemies getting damaged, like a ranged enemy and a melee enemy. I think this was like this. Um, Black Rope overall scales one of the. Actually, you know, this is the best scaling hero in the entire game currently at this meta uh, and uh, the version 1.02, which means. Black Rope is always getting even stronger, 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 stronger. The best scaling unit. Uh, I think on wall he is like insane. Uh, and in stages he should be even more insane. Like, I don't really see counters to him as well. Like, this is one of the units that I don't really see counters to it. Um, then Talos, insane damage, good AoE damage as well. Really good on wall. On stages. I can see him struggle a little bit, but on wall, you want boom, you get boom. There we go, really good for climb and also for push. And Night Leader, Night Leader of course, a um, uh, few people probably saying he's currently rank 1, I'm not quite sure, but especially on wall, like I said, everything that you can convert damage to zero is insanely good, Night Leader can do this. And uh, yeah, especially if you put the 50% rage after the rage gain, you practically, yeah, you practically can like almost constantly immune. Only after the fifth, fourth, sixth usage, something, something like this, you're like not. But for the wall, it's most of the time it's 
enough. For stages, I think climbing, yes. Pushing. Hmm. Maybe even pushing. I think nightly draw below is really, really strong. Definitely need a little bit nerf or something like this. Or other heroes need a little bit of buff, actually. I think, yeah, I think Knight Leader overall is, like, kind of good as he is. Um, his CC immunity making him, like, a little bit overpowered. Hmm, actually, yeah, Knight Leader is super strong. So, this was concluding of the tier list of um, the current version 1.02 in the current meta facing the wall and the stages. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye and as always, stay fucking awesome.